Hey there, traders. Welcome back to another daily recap for Wednesday, September 25, 2024. Current time is 8.25 a.m. Eastern as I'm making this pre-market video. My name is Sam Morton. What I do here on this channel is identify levels on the SPY chart before the market opens that should provide support and or resistance during the open session for the day. And I use these levels to trade against an E-mini futures, which is the symbol ES. I follow a process that gives me pretty good results over the long term. The S&P continues to push a little higher, little by little. If they fight through some not insignificant overhead resistance, which is where they're currently at, the bulls probably want to break out to new highs again, possibly another run higher. Today, I have identified a zone toward the top of this chart. It's the area between 575.06 and 574.78. Essentially, anywhere within that zone could be overhead resistance today if price gets up that high today. The other levels are typical areas of support and resistance. We also need to be looking for any signals and clues that were near a trend change. One of those signals being the presence of professional trading activity coming into the futures market. If that happens, that increases the chance price could be pushed down for another reset. At the end of this video, I'll pull up some longer time frame charts of the SPY and maybe some other ETFs to see if we can get a better idea of what's around the corner. So stick around to the end. After the closing bell, we'll come back to this same chart to discuss any trades that may have resulted from today's levels. Any trade, whether it's good or bad, will be examined and inputted into a tracking log. This is a way that you can see the results of every trade every day that result from these daily levels. I'll catch you on the other side after the market closes. We're back. It's getting kind of late in the day. It's almost 9.30 p.m. Eastern. So they decided to go down a little bit today. And you can see the two levels that the SPY messed around with today. And without digging into it too much, you can see that they were important. They hovered in this around this level for a while, and then they bounced off this level for a while. And even almost gave a recycle trade. So what you want to know is how you would have traded the levels. Well, nothing really happened until around here. So I'm going to adjust these levels because playing by the rules, you want to adjust these $0.05 cents toward price to grab more trades. So 570.46 becomes 570.51 as price is coming in down into this level, you want to push the level up toward price. This is simply just to beat the front runners at their own game. And meanwhile, I'll adjust this one. 568.99 becomes 569.04. Right there. So I want to point something out. I meant, I've mentioned this before. I call it the 2020 rule. So if you have a consolidation that gets within 20 cents of a level. So that would be right here. 570.71. Let's make this kind of a lighter blue line here and just can't get to your level. This was a near miss by the rules because they got down to a low of 570.60, so nine cents away they took off. And if enough time elapses, I'm willing to try this level again if it looks like it's going to provide support on other time frames, other indicators that I'm using. But in this case, they got within 20 cents multiple times, definitely more than 20 minutes. So when they finally got down to this level, I'm not willing to take it. So I'll show you the recording of this. Nothing happened because there was no trade here, but just to show you that I just kind of waited this one out, considered it done, and that was the right decision because they fell down. And then I had a, an order to go long down here. Now, this was a near miss at uh, the low was 569.10. So just six pennies away before they took off. But once again, if they come back into it quickly, that's usually the better kind. If, they, if price kind of sort of grinds slowly into a level, it's less likely to provide the kind of reaction you want. But if it comes in fast to a level, generally speaking, if everything else looks good, that's the time to take the trade. So I was willing to take it again, and I got a base hit here and the second time, or sorry, the third time they came into this level was the really the money spot. And then, so so you remember 570.46 was the level from the morning. Well, if you take five cents away, it's 570.41. So that's what you would be waiting for for a recycle trade, and they did not get it. So, But just kind of cool to see that these levels were important, and they were identified before the market opened in the morning. Here's my trade. So you'll notice the time. It's 10.36, and I just want to point out that they had already been up here, and I had orders to go, or an order to go short, but I changed my, and that, of course, they never got to the level, so I changed my my plan, and so I put an order to go long if it got down to this 570.51. I just want to point out that they got close, as you've already seen, but I'm just going to scrub ahead here and show you. There's So I made the level dash just to say, okay, if they come back into it later the right way, I might be willing to take it again, but they tried a few times, as you know, 
At some point, I make the line dotted. That's kind of my indication that the level is done for the day. Let me back up and show you. Here we go. So this is, they had violated that 2020 rule I have. So I cancel my order. So I'm just waiting to see what happened. And at some point, I, when they got down and would have, would have triggered a trade at this level, I hovered my mouse over it uh, 40 cents, which would be the equivalent of a four-point base hit in the E-minis for a while to see what would happen. I'll just show you that. So there, that would have been the order, right? So I'm just kind of seeing it. Will they come up and give me a, would they have given me a base hit? That's kind of the question. I mean, I'm not going to chase the trade at this point. I'm out of it. I made the, the decision, but they never did. So that was kind of my confirmation. that I made the right decision. And then, what was it, around 1 o'clock or so? When they fell down into, right after 1. There we go. So that was a near miss. So I'm same thing. I'm doing the same thing here. I'm marking this line just to say, okay, if they come back into it the right way, it's been at least 20 minutes or so. I'll take it again. And that's what happened. Just about perfect. Here, I think. There we go. So I was long four. I took three off at a base hit, trailed one. It didn't get me very far. Just a tick or so into the money before that one contract was stopped out. So would have been better off. Just took all four off. But I'm not complaining. And as you know, the third time was a bigger and then, of course, nothing happened on this recycle trade. I wasn't even actually prepared for this one, but it wouldn't have worked anyway, and they never got to the adjusted level. So anyway, that's my one trade, and could have been your base hit if you played the level correctly this morning. Let's take a quick look at the daily chart. So they decided to go down today, but they're still just kind of messing around in this area, and not a whole lot to determine. They're maybe kind of creating a range. We can kind of probably derive some type of pattern um, Maybe by tomorrow morning, I'll have something on the chart based on the sailor chart and some other uh, smaller time frames here. But take a look at the IWM. This is what's interesting. If you do remember, I, I hope that I talked about if they could get above the high of this, which was 225, I think. We called it 225. There we go, 229, close enough. And close a daily candles above this big old tail candle here on good volume, then this reversal or this trend change would be off the table. But as this stands, this is basically telling me that they're going to probably go lower. And what they've been doing for the last several days, they're, they've been going lower. And now they got below the low of this candle that started this whole pattern. And what they do, they went and filled the gap here, the close of this day here on September 16. They filled it within a few pennies, and that's where they stopped. So this is playing out to the downside. They're below this. So will they go farther? They're going to be some, some support somewhere. But will the SPY follow? That's kind of the question I'm asking myself because the IWM tends to kind of lead the SPY. Not always, but something to look at. So, you know, this, uh, this played out or is playing out as I thought it would after we got this candle back on the 18th. This tail candle on large volume and timing was about right for a trend change. And they seem to be doing it. On the log, we have the playing by the rules log, very straightforward. The first level was not triggered because of that consolidation, that 2020 rule we talked about, and then the base hit of four points. Every time I say base, it means four points. So there you go. Now, traded one contract, $200. Two contracts, $400. Pretty easy math. My trades, same thing. Didn't trade the first one. You saw that. I recorded it. And then I effectively got 3.06 points because I had a four-contract trailer. Just took three off at a base hit. So I netted $612.50. And that wraps up today's video. Thanks for watching and following along with these daily recaps. Remember, these daily levels can be your bread and butter if you want to adopt this trading approach. So you identify levels before the opening bell that price is likely to react from throughout the day, and then use other tools and indicators to validate the importance of those levels if and when price gets to them. It really does take the guesswork out of finding good entry and exit points during the open session. The work is already done prior to the opening bell, and so all you need to do is follow a few rules along the way and let the levels drive your trades. If you found value in today's levels and analysis, be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications, so you'll continue to get these recap videos. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.